and welcome to the testing RxJS observable effectively talk. This is me, Shai. What the hell? Ah, uh, of course. Okay. Okay, ignore that. Um, are you ready? Let's do it. Yay! Yay! Okay, let's let's begin. So testing RxJS observables effectively without marbles, okay? And uh, <laughs> let's see how we can achieve that. So by the end of this talk, you'll be much less fearful about testing observables and much more effective in doing so. But first, who am I? I'm Shai Resnick. I'm known as that Angular testing guy. I'm also a Google developer expert for Angular and I'm the founder of HiRes.io, which is an education and training company that focuses on cost-effective Angular testing and teaching that in a fun and entertaining way. And over the years, my talks have been viewed by over 170,000 developers and probably a few random people as well. And two of those talks are Resilient Angular Testing, which I did in NGConf of 2020. I am super recommending if you like testing and Angular testing, watch this talk. And also another talk I did in Angular Connect called Angular Testing in TDD, where I hooked a device to my brain and showed how I'm thinking while I'm test driving an Angular app. So check this out as well. As I said, my main passion in life is to help busy companies become more cost-effective via testing transformation. What do I mean by cost-effective? Basically, it means to ship faster and to cut expenses, which lead to happier clients and gaining competitive advantage, but also it leads to happier developers, okay? And what makes developers happier? Doing meaningful work, upgrade their skills, and live a more balanced life so they can live a stress-free life and actually have work-life balance. Okay, but what's preventing companies and developers from achieving these goals, from my experience, are unexpected bugs. And the only way I know how to deal with those is to run tests. Most of the companies run tests manually and hope for the best. Some companies actually write automated tests, but then they run into the second issue that I uh, encountered, which are inefficient tests. So they end up switching from wasting time on fixing unexpected bugs to wasting time on fixing inefficient tests. And that leads to frustrations and, you know, they or on giving up on testing whatsoever and accepting that, you know, just manually testing is the way to go, which gets them to square one. So to counter that, what I teach is test effective development, which is a way to find the balance between getting confidence and getting efficiency. How cost effective is a specific strategy, tool or technique, how much time it saves us compared to how much confidence it gives us. So with that, I went on a mission to find better terms, better strategies and better tools that will challenge the normal ways we're used to do stuff in, in testing and to find more cost effective ways to do it or more test effective. And all that will help stop developers from slipping like this into slipping like this. Or as I like to say, test right, sleep tight. So you can find a lot of the strategies that I teach and how to actually integrate these strategies in your day to day by watching my free masterclass, cost effective Angular testing, visiting this link. OK, so do yourself a favor. Go watch this masterclass as soon as possible if you're suffering from unexpected bugs or inefficient tests. And all of that leads me to today's topic, testing observables. So I want to show you what's the most test effective way I found to test observables. And it starts from my background with observables. OK, so a few years ago, when I started testing my first observables, I quickly realized that testing observables is hard. OK, and I ran into two main issues. The first one was structure or shall I say structure. OK, it wasn't like obvious when I looked at an observable what the hell is going on here, okay? What do I need to test here? Or what are all the pieces? <laughs> so this, this is the first problem that I faced. Like, where do I even start from? The second one was marble testing. And I Googled how to test observables and everything I could find was about marble test, marble test, marble test. That's the only way I saw that people teach about how to test observables. And with marble test, I ran into four main issues. 
The first one was that they had like multiple libraries. Okay, there was the official one from ArcGIS internals, like the core ArcGIS. You could import a test scheduler. The second one I found was Jasmine Marbles, which is actually in the official documentation of Angular and NGRX. It was written by the NGRX team, and you know all the examples in the documentations there are using Jasmine Marbles. But you have more libraries like ArcGIS Marbles and Jest Marbles. So I had like multiple libraries and each library had its own API and I got confused because you know sometimes a blog post was referring like the test scheduler but Jasmine Marbles didn't have it anyway I got confused okay by the multiple choices and stuff like that the second issue I had with it was the syntax first of all it was this test scheduler which I didn't know why do I even need it and the second thing was the syntax the actual syntax the cryptic language of marble testing and when I first looked at it I was like help me I don't want to learn this syntax okay so this was the second issue okay I need to learn all this just in order to test a simple observable that's crazy the third issue was Jasmine Marble itself being the most popular marble testing library in Angular I had and still have issues with its lack of documentation okay there isn't an official documentation for this library and you can find bits and pieces in the NGRX or Angular docs but in order to find out when stuff doesn't work <laughs> what I needed to do is to actually turn to the source code and actually read the source code and try to figure out how does it work so that was another thing I needed to solve in order to just make it work and the fourth thing which is one of the most important one for me was that marble testing was about testing implementation details and what do I mean by that if you take a look at the cryptic syntax we can see that you know if you take a look at line 15 here you see the dashes between the values and these dashes represent virtual frames of time okay and if you take a closer look uh, you know you, you can see sometimes it's like two frames past and sometimes it's one sometimes three and we actually configure the observable to know like okay how much time passed between values and when i looked at it i was like who the hell cares okay like why do i care how much time has passed between values you know I don't care about this because these are implementation details and what I really care for is if enough time passes what are the values that the observable emitted and what is their order so this is all I care about okay I don't care about how much time was passing specifically between each value because these are implementation details and the more you're tying your test into these implementation details and you change stuff now your test break without any good reason Okay, so you want to test the outcome, not the implementation. So this is an important rule to remember about testing observables. Okay, so then I thought, okay, how can I solve these two main problems, the structure and marble testing? So first, let's start with how I handled the structure problem. Okay, and for that, we'll show an example code. So a quick backstory about this example. Way before COVID-19 hit, I was working from home remotely alone and it started, it was fantastic, but after a while I became sad and lonely. But fortunately, I started to get visits from my imaginary friends, okay? And they are really good friends of mine now. They even bought me an ice cream. So yeah, um, and because I had so many, it was hard keeping track. So I, I decided to write an app to, to keep track on my uh, imaginary friends. Uh, so I, I wrote an app. Okay, let's see its code. Okay, so we have here the imaginary friends component, okay, which has a simple method called get best friends because, you know, sometimes you want to hang out with just your best friends, right? Right. Only I, I can hear that, right? Nope. So what this method does is to call the service method get list of friends and then just map it to a new filtered array of just the best friends. And that way we win the game of life. Okay, so this is the code, right? 
And then if you look at it, so this is the problem I faced, you know, how, where do I even start? But then I thought to myself, okay, let's apply the same principles that I've been applying for years in other tests. Let's see if they apply to observable testing. And what I realized is that, yeah, they apply because testing is testing is testing. So one of these principles were the three parts of a test. Okay. There's always for every single action test, we always have three parts. The first one is the setup. The next is the action. And the last is the verification or the verify. So in terms of testing in the setup phase, we want to configure the fake inputs in the action. We want to run the function or the method. And in the verify stage, we want to catch a real outputs and compare them to the expected results. Okay. So this is the principle. So if you take a look again at this code, think for yourself, okay, where are the inputs in this code? what is considered an input here. Okay. And if you guess that the get list of friends is an input, you guess correctly. Okay. Because this is the only input in this test that comes from the imaginary friend service. Okay. We have the input covered. Okay. We know we need to fake this, but now where is the output of this test? Okay. And this is a tricky one with observable because we used to think about the code inside of the map and stuff like that, or inside of the operators, which is the content, but the actual output here is this pipe and then all the operators. But the pipe method actually is the output because it returns the actual observable that we want to catch and to listen to. Right? So we need to remember that the output of any observable test is an observable. Okay. And this is a cool thing to remember. The actual content is this, right? And this will help us know what to verify in the last part of the test, but the actual output comes from the pipe method. So now that we know the input and the output of this code, now let's see how to actually write the test. First, we need to know how to configure the fake inputs. And for that, I created a library called Autospies, which has two flavors, one for Jasmine and one for Jest. And this is a library I created a few years ago. And Angular actually tweeted about this library, which is super cool. And the whole point of this library is to create spies automatically. Okay, this is the... <laughs> the point of this library. Okay, let's see some of its benefits. It helps you to create spies instantly. It is smartly typed, so it helps with refactoring and it provides async methods helpers. So you can easily configure method that returns promises and observables and stuff like that. And now let's talk about its API. And to talk about its API, let me show you my principle of teaching. Okay, I try to apply the Pareto principle and to pick like the two method or the 20% of the API that will help you understand everything faster and sooner and not confuse you too much. So let's focus. Actually, it's more like 15%. Will you shut up? Okay. Okay. Just trying to help. Sorry. Okay, so uh, let's see the Pareto API of Autospice. Okay, and for that, we'll focus today on only two functions. The first one is provide Autospy, and the second is the next with method. And let's see them in action. Okay, so let's open up our spec file. This is like a, just a, an empty spec file for now. And now what we want to do, if we go back to our component here, what we want to do is to somehow to create a, a fake imaginary service as a spy and to configure its method to return a fake input. Okay. So first of all, what we want to do is to inject our imaginary service, right? But we don't want to just provide it as is. We want to create an automatic spy out of this class. So for that, we can use an API from auto spies called provide auto spy. And let's get it from Jasmine Autospice. And now we can just wrap this service with this function and we get an Autospy. So we actually configured a spy in the injector now. And now to inject it, let's, let's create, first of all, a variable for it. Let's call it, let's copy this and we'll call it imaginary friend service spy. And it will be of type spy of imaginary service. And it's, the type spy comes again from auto spy. And this is important because this will give us the right types for the easy refactoring. And now we want to just, let's duplicate this code. Let's copy 
this service and in order to solve this uh, error message we'll use this trick to cast this injection as any because type script and angular complains because the service type is not equal to the spy of the service but the main thing the most important thing is that you configure this correctly and that way you could actually use the spy with auto completion and stuff like that and let's see it in action now so now we have a reference to our spy to our service but it's a spy version of our service and we can actually use all of its methods but we can also if you are familiar with jasmine or with jest even in jasmine we can also use the end property to get access to the configurations of this method so instead of just using the return value which can just like return a simple value we can use the auto spies api and can use the next with method and next with as we can see by the signature accepts any value of the same type of the original method Okay, so it's type safe. Okay, so let's create like fake imaginary friends, okay, of, of the same type. And let's import the friend type, which just has a name and a Boolean property. So let me just copy this real quick to save time. And here you see they have two fake imaginary friends, Mark the Alligator and Abe the Challenging but Thoughtful Possum. Okay, and these are my fake imaginary friends. And uh, trust me, the real ones are way cooler. We are! I know, right? I'm not your best friend. Shh, let him continue. So now we can pass these imaginary friends to the next with method. And we just completed the configuration of our input observable. So now what it will do, if we go back to our component file, when our test will run this code, this get list of friends method will return an observable with our fake friends as the value. Okay, so let's go back to the spec and we see it here. Okay, get list of friends will return an observable because of this next with with the fake imaginary friends. And that's it. That's how you configure your spies. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, if you're a nerd. Shh, you're ruining his talk. He's so handsome. Okay, so this was the setup phase, right? Now we have the second phase, which is the action. And as I said, it's just running the function. So let's take our component under test and call get best friends. And now how do we catch these values out of the observable here? Okay, what we can do. So catching real outputs, okay? The simplest way to do it is to use the subscribe method, okay? That's the simplest way. So what we can do is to just call subscribe. And here we can take, let's break it a line, the actual result. And here we can expect the actual result to equal the expected result okay and this expected result it will be an array of the same type of friends but we only want the best friends right so this is you can call it the verify stage right so this will work let's see it in action okay let's see the test running and yeah the test is completed okay we just configured the, the spies and we subscribed and we compared the value that we're getting to what we are expecting, which is cool, which is cool. But the subscribe uh, way has its issues. Okay, let's talk about them. The first downside is that it breaks the structure. The second one is that it handles multiple values awkwardly. And the third one, is, in some cases, it might cause memory leaks to use this way. Let's see why. So, okay, if you take a look at this code, first of all, let's, let's see the, the structure. So see, we have this uh, nesting going on. And you can see that if I remove the comments here, it kind of looks weird. Okay, you need to, oh, there is a subscribe here and this is the rest of the code. Okay, that, like I don't really like this uh, nested structure that isn't clear, like what are the different parts of the test. Uh, the second thing is that, okay, this is a simple example, okay, just to keep things simple for this short talk. But if we had like multiple values coming out of this uh, observable, we would have problems because we couldn't like, you know, expect, you know, it was awkward uh, to test all these values. So we needed to use like stuff like, uh, you know, pipe and two array or something 
something like that. And and yeah, and, and it would make our, our test less clear and such. And also in some cases using the subscribe here, you need to remember to unsubscribe or to somehow close or complete this observable somehow. And if you forget, you might cause like if you have thousands of tests, you might cause like performance issues and stuff like that. But the most burning issue for me was to how do I test multiple values? And again, to, to show that I would need to show like a more complicated example. So we'll just stick with this example. So I started thinking, how can I solve this uh, issue? OK, without using marble tests, without learning this cryptic language. And then I created Observer Spy. And the idea came from my pr frustration by like looking for JavaScript solutions and couldn't find any. So I looked at other languages like Java and .NET and trying to figure out how they are testing their observable. And I ran into a book on RxJava, which showed a way to use a subscriber spy to, you know, check for the values of the observable in the test. And I was like, huh, that's brilliant. And so simple. We can use an observer or subscriber or whatever to do the same thing in JavaScript. So then I started, like I created this library. It took me like really quick because it's really a simple library, but then it got modified by other people who joined the team and contributed. And it became this like very clean and neat API to write observable test and and ever since i released this library i've been getting a lot of positive responses to this library and it started getting featured in like this talk uh, from rxjs live by jean nicolas wortman from the rxjs core team where he recommends using observer spy and also by mike ryan from the ngrx core team on the angular show podcast so i was super happy to see a lot of people start using it more and more and getting value like i did so let's go over some of the benefits of Observer Spy. The first one is it helps to flatten the structure. So you don't need to subscribe or stuff like that. It also helps you to unsubscribe from your observables automatically. And it helps you to catch multiple values. And it does it in a nice and clean way. Now let's go over its Pareto API or 20% API. Go over two main functions that you need to know in order to use it. The first one is the subscribe spy 2. And the second one is the auto unsubscribe. And with these two, you you have a good basis to use Observer Spy. So let's see it in action. So now let's try and refactor this code to use Observer Spy. So the first thing we need to do is to import. And we can auto import it, but I just want to show you how to do it. So we can import the subscribe spy2. And instead of subscribing here, we can use it. So let's first of all extract this code outside the verify stage and let's remove this subscription here and now we can subscribe spy2 to this observable so it returns an observer spy and now we can use this observer spy instead of this actual result we can just use this observer spy and its method so it has a lot of helper method, but the most important ones are get last value or get first value. It basically gives you all the values that this observable emitted. So you can choose whether you want to see all the values and, you know, figure out if they are in the right order, or if you just are interested in the last value it emitted, you can just use get last value. And this is what we'll do here because we don't have multiple values here, just one value. And this method is sufficient in this case. So basically that's it. <laughs> you know, we just refactor it to use observer spy. And if we run the test again, we can see that it passed. OK, so we refactor the test to use Observer Spy without breaking it. So what this code does is it subscribes to the observable that returns from here. And then we can just use its method to investigate this spy. OK, this is, you know, the most common used function in this library. And just quickly, I just want to show you the other uh, method that I mentioned, the auto unsubscribe. You can uh, use the test file if you're using Jasmine and Karma, or you have instructions in Jest auto spies on how to use it in Jest. But you can actually import it here and use it here. And this will unsubscribe from every subscription that is created from this function. And that's it. These are the two functions that you need to know.
Okay, cool. So just a quick recap. What we did here is that in order to configure the fake inputs, we created the imaginary friend service spy. We created the auto spy from the imaginary friend service. We injected it using this trick. Then we configured its method with NextWid to return the observable with our fake values. And then we used observer spy to subscribe and then get the last value without having to nest anything and without having to unsubscribe. Cool. So that was a lot. But wait, there's more. So I picked a simple example so I could fit it in in a short talk, but there are more complicated examples that you probably encounter in your day to day. And for that, we have other principles like the just enough principle, the test per link in the chain, and also how to use them in order to test switch map or intervals and stuff like that. And also if you're using NGRX, you want to learn how to test effects better and the same principles apply there. So I don't have time to cover all this now. That's why I created a courses package called test effective angular where i cover everything and more in all of my courses and if you want to learn more about that check out my free master class where i teach one of my best tips and tricks on how to write more cost effective angular tests and also in the end of this master class i show how to get my courses in a discount before we release the new pricing model in our website and then the prices will go up so check it out as soon as possible if you are suffering from unexpected bugs or inefficient tests so let's summarize. Today we learned about the basic observable test structure and how to approach testing observables. We learned about auto spies for faking inputs and how to use observer spies for catching real outputs in a super easy way. And with that, I would like to thank you very much. Again, check out the link. And uh, this is another friend of mine. And uh, okay, so I hope you enjoyed this talk. I try to teach you as much as possible. So you will have the basics on how to use these libraries and you can experiment on your own. If you want to shorten the gap and to get faster and more effective in your testing, check out again, check out this link. And I promise you, you will shortcut your way and you reduce like month into weeks and save more time and money. So check out the workshop there. And with that, I will say goodbye, enjoy the rest of the event, right? Right. Wait, where is everybody? That's it, right? We did our part now. What about our money? Yeah, our money. Yeah. Bye. No, seriously. What about Bye. the- Bye. Dude. We did everything you wanted us to do. And now you need to pay up. No, I don't. Oh, yeah? You angular mother... You stay out of it, giraffe. Let him go. He's not normal. Who has imaginary friends anyway? Everybody has imaginary friends, right? Nah, I'm pretty sure you're crazy, man. Anyway, we're out of here, sucker. Don't call us again. I'm going to watch Netflix. Okay, bye. I still love you, Shy. I'll follow you till the end. Hi, I'm Joe Weems. Thanks for checking out this video from Enterprise NG 2021. Online conferences were great, but it's time to get back in person. See your old friends, make some new ones, and take your career to the next level. Head over to ngconf.org to get your ticket. See you there.